Welcome in. I am the Crypto Bull God, and this is the recorded on Wednesday, airing on Thursday, March 3rd, 2021 Crypto Bull God podcast. You can find me on both Twitter and TradingView at Crypto Bull God. It's getting exciting out there. Uh, the market is really picking up pace. Everybody's trying to call shots left and right and where the market's going and uh, keeps throwing curveballs. The best thing that you can do is hodl. It's kind of comical when I see people coming out uh, in this space and trying to predict 2 and 3 and 5% dips. Who cares? If you were smart and you were buying in 2019 and 18, who really cares? Because you're up a bazillion percent. But in all seriousness, for people that do TA like myself, the whole point, at least from my perspective, I know there's a lot of channels out there that bring a lot of hype to the space and just want viewer content so they have dollar bills in their pockets. That is the truth. Um, but at least for myself, what I'm aiming to do is to try to help educate the common person in the market as well as you know, also providing valuable insights for people who are more seasoned within the space um, in simplistic terminology, by keeping it stupid simple, my view of certain charts so that you have logical entry and exit places within the market. So that's what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, whether or not you uh, buy Bitcoin when it's 5% down or 5% up, if you have an understanding of the general direction of the market and where things are going, it won't matter. Um, but, but, <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, you know, to bring it back to last episode, it's kind of funny how things worked out. I recorded the last episode on Sunday. And it aired on Monday. And one of the things I had brought up in that episode was, um, you know, we could sh see a, a sharp correction, right? We could see a sharp correction. And lo and behold, Bitcoin dropped from 58 to 43,000. Okay, so we had uh, this is like a, roughly a 26% correction. If you follow me on Twitter, hey, 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 uh, at Crypto Bull God, you'll see that, you know, at the moment, you know, market kind of cooled off a bit. Uh, but it's starting to pick up pace now. There's a, there have been a lot of big moves. I'm going to get into eventually my chart of the week. We're going to delve into that and kind of talk about one of the charts I've been eyeing in particular. I've tweeted about a few times that nah, it hasn't got a lot of traction on Twitter, but I think people should be very mindful um, of this project and how good the TA, the technical uh, analysis looks um, within the chart. Beautiful market structure on this one. So I'll bring that up a little bit later, but um, yeah, Bitcoin dropped from 58,000 down to 43. Yeah, 26% correction is kind of par for the course. Um, but one of the things I'm looking about that I had tweeted about was if this correction is at least similar to the prior pullback that we saw in January where we came down from about 42 to like, uh, it was like 29 or 28,000. Um, we could see a bounce up to about perhaps 55,000. And then we could see the market kind of roll over again. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. Um, I am leaning towards the fact that at least in the short term, okay, I'm just talking about the month of March. That's all I'm talking about. Um, for the month of March, you know, we could be looking at, right now, Bitcoin's at just over 50,000, okay? We've recovered from the drop to 42,000, it was pretty quick. I could see Bitcoin, or excuse me, 43,000, excuse me. Um, I could see Bitcoin recovering to around 55,000. You'll see your altcoins run. A lot of them have made some you know, large pushes uh, higher. Um, eh, but I don't think we're going to break the 58,000 and continue moving up. I still think we maybe we double tap 42 or 43,000. I keep saying 42, it was 43,000. <laughs> Um, but I've also tweeted the fact that I think it's very possible that we could pull back right in between 38 to 42,000. If you're wondering why 38 to 42,000, again, g give me a follow on Twitter. I really aim to explain things in very simplistic terms 
Um, and even if you're not familiar with uh, technical analysis and you really don't have an understanding of how to read charts, I really think I lay things out very simple, very clean. I think the most successful um, investors and traders who use charts, um, I think the most successful ones, they have the cleanest charts. They don't oversimplify, uh, don't, yeah, they don't oversimplify it. Uh, they don't overcomplicate it. They don't have 5,000 lines drawn within the chart. So I keep things very, very, very simple. Guys, I just want to emphasize how early we are. I mean, for myself, whew, with how excited I am right now, I literally may implode as we reach our cycle top. But I really want to try to lay out in a very clear way um, an expression uh, for my part in terms of how early I think we are still. Especially if you're truly invested in this market and you know what you're doing and you've, you, <laughs> like myself, you spent a shit ton of time researching the market and you're just adamant about the generational wealth transfer opportunity that is upon us and that will be upon us for the next several years. This isn't something that's ending within the next few months. Um, Bitcoin, let's just talk about Bitcoin for a second. Bitcoin is at $50,000, okay? Last cycle top, okay? We had a blow-off euphoric top. It reached all the way up to $20,000, okay? And this is before you heard about people like Elon Musk getting into it and institutional involvement and all the infrastructure behind many other crypto projects as well. It's not just Bitcoin, but we're talking about Bitcoin for the moment, okay? Um, we hit $20,000 in Bitcoin at that point. And I mean, very, 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 very few people knew about Bitcoin. Um, based on some... <laughs> Based on some conversations I've had with people in my surrounding area, it's still readily apparent to myself um, that most people have absolutely no idea what really Bitcoin is. But still, more people are at least aware of it, okay? Um, and we're only at $50,000. We're only at two and a half times our prior cycle top, blow-off top of $20,000. Now, to put that in perspective... The prior market cycle, which had a blow off top way back in, I believe, 2000 and I think it was 2000 at the very end of 2014, if I'm not mistaken, it was around $1,500 or $1,600, I believe, somewhere around there. Point is, it won 15x or close to 20x um, at the end of 2017 when it reached 20, right? 20,000, meaning from market cycle top to market cycle top, if we say it's 1,500 to 20,000, it did like a 15x, all right, approximately, or 16, 17x, whatever. We've only done a two and a half so far. Now, I'm not suggesting that Bitcoin is going to do a 15, 16, 17x, which would imply it's going to hit $300,000 plus. I'm not implying that. But I will tell you this. Number one, and you can mark this down uh, and come back to this episode a year from now. We're nowhere near a top. Anyone I've been adamant about this. Anyone suggesting to you that Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency market is near a top has absolutely no clue what they're talking about. That I'm adamant about. Okay, I see two possible scenarios at the moment. One, Bitcoin is going to have a top, a semi-blow-off top, semi-blow-off top, a little north of $100,000, a lot lower than some people are expecting. Let's say somewhere between one hundred and twenty dollars and $150,000. let us pick the midpoint, and let's say $135,000. We follow that up with a, I don't know, Bitcoin likes to historically, once it has a blow-off top, it historically likes to have around an 85% correction, okay? So maybe the correction is shorter. Maybe we see a 60% correction, okay? And the duration of the bear market, once we enter a bear market, meaning prices are declining, uh, the trends are going down, it's not favorable for anyone going long on the price and wanting to invest, maybe the duration of time is shorter than a traditional bear market, and then we see another massive parabolic rise to the two, three, four hundred thousand dollars okay? So I can see that. That's scenario one. Scenario two is we really do... Once we break $100,000, shit gets real. I mean, shit gets so real that 
you start seeing things reported on the news that, well, Bitcoin's 100. You, you basically see all of the things that would support the price going higher, that the news media would want to pump into the price, that the people who are in it would want to put out there to create mass euphoria, th that narrative will be out there. Well, if it hit 100,000, why can't it hit 500,000? You're going to see $500,000 targets because I've seen that, right? So what's going to happen is the other scenario I could see playing out is once we hit $100,000, this thing blows past 200 and hits like 250,000. 200, I think it was 237 or 250,000 was my original price target a year and a half ago. Just for fun, I came up with a price target. I mean, that, that's anyone's guess really at the end of the day. Uh, there's all sorts of models and charts you can use, but um, nobody knows. Um, so those are the two scenarios that I see playing out. But let's talk about something else that needs to get some attention here. And that is the altcoin market cap. Because this is really the clincher in terms of talking about how the, the market has not topped whatsoever. When I say the altcoin market cap, what I mean is if you look at the market capitalization of every cryptocurrency project out there that excludes Bitcoin, there's something key that just happened that I tweeted about, uh, that I've tweeted about on numerous occasions, um, but I also had a video out there, and you can follow me on, on, crypt, on YouTube at Crypto Bull God, and I had a TA video out there very simplistically explaining what's going on. Um, just like Bitcoin... Okay, had a blow off top at the end of 2017. The entire cryptocurrency market as well had a blow off top, really at the beginning in January of 2018. Anyone invested in XRP at a half a cent and rode that, <laughs> rode that bad boy up to over $3, God bless you because you're not working anymore. You're working for yourself. But that, those are the sorts of moves we saw. We saw 500x. 1,000x, 200x, 300x, 400x returns, just absolutely maddening. Anyway, when that total market cap, okay, the total altcoin market cap uh, had a blow off top, just like Bitcoin, it was at around, I'm looking at the charts here, it was at around 400 and we're just going to, we're going to use a nice round number, 480, okay, $480 billion, okay, $480 billion, I sound like Trump, Billion, billion, uh, it's gonna be huge. Um, so anyway, we had, we had this blow off top at 480 billion, right? Something interesting just happened. We, we, uh, we blew past that top, okay? We, we blasted right through 480 billion, so we created a new cycle top. Now, as a TA, as a technical analyst, what often happens and what you want to see in what is a very bullish scenario that indicates prices are going to move higher is once a level of resistance, in this case, $480 billion was a level of resistance. That is because it was our prior cycle top. Okay, It's an area of resistance. Okay, That is our top. That's the peak. That's the pinnacle. It's the mountaintop. If you can blast through the mountaintop, what you want to see is you want to come back to that mountaintop and you want to create it as a floor. You're not going below there now. Before it was hard, we had blow off top. We couldn't get past 480 billion, right? We couldn't get past it. That was our top. But if you can blast through it and you can come down and now create a floor, that's not your ceiling anymore. It's our floor. That is extremely bullish and that's what just happened. We blasted through 480 billion. We hit $703 billion. We came back down. People are freaking out this, this past week. It's, it's crazy to see how emotional people get. Um, this past week, people are just getting so... It, you have to really... Um, emotion is a money killer. Uh, control your emotions and know what you're buying and, and uh, know when to buy and sell. Because I'll tell you, people get way too emotional in this market when they can't... They don't know what they're invested in or they can't read a chart. Anyway, we blasted through that prior uh, ceiling. Okay, We hit $703 billion. We came down. We've tapped it a few times, and we've created a floor. And it's the most beautiful market structure you can look at as a technical analyst because now what's going to happen? Now, I'm not saying this month we can't come down and retest. It's really a zone. It's not just one number. Uh, is really a zone. And again, you can follow me on TradingView. You can follow me on Twitter. I have all these charts posted. 
but it's a zone and we can come down. We could tap this zone again over the next couple weeks. But what I fully expect now that we've, we've, we've turned our ceiling into a floor is we're going to blast higher. And if you actually look at a chart and look at our prior cycle from 2014 and you compare it to 2018, you'll see, you can't even see what the prior cycle top was prior to 2018. It's, it's, when you auto scale on a chart, it's just too small to see. And that's what's going to happen here. And that's why I'm so excited about this is because we're sitting at, right now we're at $577 billion, okay? This is going to look like a dot on your screen if you have a chart pulled up. We're going into the trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, okay? And what this also means for the altcoins that you're invested in, we've seen some massive pumps in some of these altcoins but we have not had a euphoric blow off top in any of these projects. Let me put things into context for you so you can really appreciate what I'm saying. It's exciting. It's exciting if you're invested in Chainlink and you bought in, let's say that you were a smart, diligent investor and you knew, <laughs> you knew to buy into fear. It's the best time. If you know what you're buying, the best time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. You don't buy something when everyone's euphoric about it. <laughs> you, that's actually an opportunity in many cases to be scaling out and wait for the prices to come back down and, and get back in, okay? The time you wanna buy, if you know what you're buying, is when everybody is scared or somebody hates a project, like XRP. You know, XRP is going down to 10 or 12 cents. You wanna buy the shit out of it, okay? Um, and you also have to know how to read a chart and know key levels to be buying. And you don't want to buy a falling knife. That's not what I'm suggesting. But the point is, is if you bought in and where I'm going with this is if you bought in uh, in March of 2020 chain link, at, let's say you just hypothetically uh, bought at $1.86 and you've ridden this thing up to $30. Well, that's about a 15x, right? So let's say you threw, you threw $5,000 in there, okay, at, at basically $2 and you wrote it up to $30. Well, I mean, now you're sitting at $75,000. Okay, that's a, that's a 15X return. You turn $5,000 into $75,000. That's a, that's a pretty big return. Um, but what I'm suggesting to you is something going from $2 to $30 is nothing compared to what you'll see during a euphoric run. If you look at a chart, what you'll see are you'll see these waves up. And once we hit the euphoric cycle where Bitcoin has its blow off top and then the rest of the cryptocurrency projects follow, you're going to see coins going from shooting from, you know, $100 all the way up to $500. And you're going to, you're going to hear about people making, you know, three, four, five, six, seven hundred X returns. Okay. It's just, it's going to be, um, insane. And that's why it's also just to kind of point out, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, it's important to understand, uh, what to do when we enter that cycle. Cause you don't want to be sitting on your hands, not knowing what you're doing. You want to have logical, uh, exit, you want to have a logical exit strategy ahead of time and know how to scale out of your investment. It's critical because you can look at your portfolio and you can see that, oh my God, I invested $10,000 and now it's at $120,000. What do I do? Well, that's a paper gain, meaning it's money in your portfolio. It's nice to look at, but with how volatile the market is and you're not going to know what I mean. If you haven't been through this before, uh, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about once we get there. But if you don't know what you're doing, you'll see your $120,000 dwindle down to, you know, $80,000. And you've just lost out on $40,000 because you weren't scaling out of your investment. So very, very, very smart to know now when you want to scale out of those investments. You, you need to know. Sell here, sell here. Unemotional. 20% here, 20% here, 20% here. And it's just, you know, ahead of time. Okay. And you're locked into it. Very, 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 very very, very important. Um, I want to get in real quick to the chart of the week that I have here. I've posted about this on Twitter a few times, and <laughs> this has one of the most beautiful market structures I have seen. Uh, this is, you know, full disclosure. I don't mind disclosing this. I don't generally, I try to refrain from um, you know, talking about things in my personal portfolio, but I don't mind saying, oh, wow, HBAR is up 8%. Holy shit. Okay, well, that's nice to see. Anyway, um, whoo, been waiting on a move there. Anyway, uh, MANA, M ticker, 
M-A-N-A, okay, they're into virtual land, which is going to be a big thing. It already is, but it's going to increasingly be a big thing. Read up on the project. But aside from the fundamentals, you know, for the most part, there are some things where I do heavily rely on the fundamentals like XRP and Ripple and what they're using them for. Despite everything going on with them, I'm still a huge advocate and believe long term, you know, what they're looking to do, their vision and understanding uh, the Nostro of Ostro accounts and eliminating that and cross-border payments. So I'm a huge advocate. Um, but aside, usually, you know, I, I do consider fundamentals, but for the most part, I more so when I'm making an investment as well, um, I am more so, okay? It's important for you to understand this. My philosophy is more so to rely on the technicals. And if you look at the technicals on MANA, it looks like it's following a perfect market structure of the total altcoin market cap and Ethereum. It's lagging Ethereum a little bit in terms of what the market structure exactly looks like. But this thing looks like a perfect cup and handle, just perfect cup and handle. I mean, I was buying, I was a little late to the party on this one. I think I bought in um, right around 18 cents. So, I mean, you know, I mean, at this point it's at 35, so almost double what I had bought it at. But um, I bought more. I just bought more at 32 cents. And the reason I bought more is because what's happening now is it's going to enter price discovery. We're going to break 36 cents, and I fully expect this to get up to 57, 93, $1.30, some Fibonacci extensions here if you follow me on TradingView. So my chart of the week is MANA, ticker M-A-N-A. -A. I strongly suggest you check this thing out. It has beautiful beautiful market structure and we're just about to enter price discovery please check this one out and you know comment below comment below if you're invested comment below if you appreciate me pointing this chart out uh and i'm able to help you out um and if you agree with me on the market structure and it, it really does mirror uh, Ethereum in many ways. I'd really appreciate hearing from you. That is something I should mention. I'd really appreciate support in terms of liking, subscribing to the channel, liking the video and, and commenting below. It really helps out with the algorithm so that we can spread really good um, content out there. You know, and speaking of getting content out there, I try my best. I really do um, to stay active on Twitter and get some videos out there, do this podcast. A um, couple reasons for it. I mean, one, I just genuinely enjoy doing this stuff. Uh, it's an outlet for me. It's a uh, an expression of a passion that I have. Um, so it, it's just an outlet for me. And um, I really do genuinely enjoy knowing that I'm hopefully um, helping other people out. Um, it really does bring, it honestly does bring a smile to my face um, getting positive feedback and knowing that people value the content that I provide, whether it's a chart or a video. I just really genuinely appreciate it. But I am busy. I am busy. I'm an actuary at trade. I've indicated that before. Um, so just depending how the week's going, uh, it really um, dictates, okay, how much time I have to really be doing some of this stuff. And I got to tell you, one of my pet peeves at work, and I don't know if anyone can relate to this. I hope you can, and maybe it's just one of those things that you sort of tolerate, you think about, but you haven't said out loud. I cannot stand when someone schedules a noon meeting, and then they have the audacity to send the invite out, and it's 12 to 1. It is 12 to 1. You could not find any other fucking time during the day to schedule the meeting besides noon to one then they say sorry to schedule the meeting during lunchtime no you're not if you weren't if you were so sorry about scheduling this non-urgent non-critical meeting you wouldn't have sent it out clearly what you really meant to say was you don't give a shit about scheduling meetings noon to one okay for you it doesn't matter you're 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 cool. You're like, you know what? Eh, it works for me. I'm just going to schedule this meeting noon to one and uh, I'll send out an apology. It's hollow in nature, but I'll make it sound authentic and uh, we're going to have this noon to one meeting. So I kindly attend the meeting, um, begrudgingly attend the meeting noon to one. It was actually interesting content. It was, all kidding aside, it was, a, it was an interesting meeting, uh, interesting topics. 
It was an interesting meeting, and interesting topics were discussed of actuarial nature. Um, and <laughs> I kind of had to chuckle because during the meeting, during the meeting, you know, I work with very smart people, very smart people, very intelligent people. Um, some people who are definitely more intelligent than I. I have no problem admitting that. I don't care. I just work really hard. I know my shortfalls. And, you know, these people are, are really intelligent. But what really gets to me sometimes is when intelligent people try to make themselves sound more intelligent than they already are. Uh, you, are you okay today? You sound a little all over the place. All persu persuasive and ubiquitous. Christ, just say all over the place. Did you have to throw out two other terms that are the same meaning to all over the place? You just said all over the place. Did you need to say pervasive and ubiquitous? Come on. You've been in meetings with those people where they use, or it's not even using multiple words that mean the same thing. They use a word. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think of my cousin. This was like 15 years ago. And, you know, I openly joked with him about this, that <laughs> I love my cousin very much. And I remember there was this period where it was about 15 years ago, and I would get a voicemail left on my phone. And his, the, he was just into using this word elastic. He would just use it in the most odd places. He would use the word elastic. And when I connected with him, he would say, well, I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to expand my vocabulary. I mean, some of the voicemails he left me sounded like a movie script. It sort of sounded like he was reading me a movie script or something. It's just, um, I, I am all for using big words and, uh, you know, sounding intelligent. But let's not reach here. Let's not reach. Let's not use the same words that mean the same. Let's not use wor multiple words that's, that mean the same thing. And let's not use words like elastic uh, and ubiquitous uh, within sentences that just don't make any sense whatsoever at all. Um, I just keep thing, things real. I don't really think I use uh, big word choices. In fact, if I'm speaking, clear sign for me as a single guy, if I'm talking to a woman and she comments to me that I'm using big word choices and I sound intelligent, date's over. Uh, not moving any further on that one because uh, <laughs> I don't think I use any large word choices. So that's a clear sign for me to run in the other direction. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work out. So, um, yeah, let's just keep, you know how I keep the chart stupid simple? Look, let's just keep our vocabulary stupid simple, all right? If you're using a word, hey, here's another thing. If you're using a word choice that 99% of the population isn't going to know, because you decided to spend your Sunday night looking up a smart word so you could sound real smart at work, don't be an ass, all right? Don't be the ass that everyone looks at because we're all going to know it. You don't sound smart. You sound like an ass, all right? And that's where we're leaving this week's episode. Don't sound like an ass. And buy cryptocurrencies, okay? Um, so in closing on that note, as we're going to do every single podcast until the conclusion of this bull cycle, please join me. In a moment of silence, for all of those I attempted on multiple occasions to get into crypto and have remained ignorant. Thank you.